Do you like Sonic the Hedgehog music? Specifically the soundtrack to Sonic Mania? Of course you do! Well, the awesome folks at Tiny Waves have released a Sonic Mania remix album featuring 11 fantastic tracks from artists such as DJ Joe, Benjamin Briggs, James Landino, and more. If you're interested, and you really should be, the link to check out the album will be down below. You should actually check it out because it is really super good and stuff. Aw oh, yeah, the Olympics, the sporting event to end all sporting events, taking place every four years with summer and winter alternating every two years, pitting athletes from all around the world in a wide plethora of competitions. The Olympic Games as we know it has been a mainstay in global culture for hundreds of years, and as such, it should be celebrated. With Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog. But why, though? This is a series of games that exists. Initially, I thought this was an April Fool's joke. This was the year 2007 we're talking about. Everybody was still begging for Sonic to be in Smash Brothers. And while that did end up happening on October 10th of that year, and a younger me at the time lost his mind as a result of this video, this image here appeared on the internet on March 28th. I was very much waiting for Sega to say haha and call it April Fools, but nope. This this is real. And somehow, some way, there are five of these games. How? With each Olympic Games, a Mario and Sonic title was there, ready to go as well. But like I said, we have five games to go over here, so let's waste no more time and get right into the first one. The game starts off with this opening video that, honestly, is pretty fantastic. Sega's CG movie team at the time was top notch, and even though it really wasn't the way anybody wanted, seeing all of these characters from both universes together was really cool. And then you dive into the actual game itself and, uh, huh. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. So, as you would expect, this is a minigame collection, with all of the Olympic events being the minigames. And you can choose between some of your favorite characters from the Mario and Sonic universes to play as. And Vector is also there. You can play as your me as well, but that's really not something I care about. The whole series has this feature actually, so if that's something that you're interested in, cool! I want to play a Mario or Sonic character in a Mario and Sonic game. That, that's just me. Similar to a typical Mario sports game, each character has its own unique stats. Though really, it doesn't matter a whole lot as long as you play the game well enough. For the events, you got racing, long jumping, archery, hammer throwing, trampoline stunts, and a whole lot more. There's swimming as well, and honestly one of the best parts of the entire series is Sonic wears a little floaty when he's in the water. I mean, just contrasting that to Dr. Eggman wearing his entire getup when he's underwater, I feel like one of these two is not doing something correctly for the Olympics, but I can't tell which one is worse. There is sort of a Mario Kart style of progression here, with a bunch of different cups housing different games, and you get rewarded with trophies at the end for doing well, as well as getting access to another cup. But honestly, the events here, they're, they're not that great to play. We're looking at a minigame collection on the Wii in 2007, everybody. Prepare to shake the controllers at any moment's notice because that is going to happen a lot. Yeah. The thing is, given the console at the time, I really wouldn't expect anything else, but it doesn't make this any more fun. And Yoshi winds up for the swing, he's waiting for the right moment. <laughs> Well, he certainly tried his best, and that's what counts. There we go, we had to just do a practice run, it's all good, we nailed it this time. <gasps> it's him! Due to the controls being what they are, the events really aren't all that enjoyable. Sure, there is a bit of a novelty to it, but it wears off pretty fast. The soundtrack, on the other hand, is shockingly awesome. For as short as these sprinting events are, the music makes it all worthwhile. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Shadow, Shadow has a gun again. Let's change the channel. Change the channel. And music aside, the sound design, boy howdy. It's some top-notch stuff. Aside from the traditional Olympic events, there are also the special dream events, which in this first version aren't really as special as you would come to expect. They're just these really bare bones minigames that try to spice things up with a couple of little Mario and Sonic elements in there. But like the rest of the events, they're really not all that fun. The later games do a much better job with this idea. And why not have a little bit of filler content as well? Last up on our list is this weird take on providing Olympics trivia. You see, you have a couple categories to choose from and the game will ask you a question, but rather than just answering it, you're required to play a really garbage mini game and then you get the answer. That is All right. All right. All right. Cool. But on the bright side, I now know that Oscar Swan was the oldest person to win an Olympic medal at the 1920 games in Antwerp. Antwerp? Would you, you just call me a twerp? And that is the first game in the series. Again, it was a really cool idea, finally having Mario and Sonic in the same title. But the final product that we got, it was pretty uneventful. Despite the fact that the game is filled with events, I... I apologize about that one. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games! At... at the Olympic? You, uh, you forgot the O there, buddy. Now we have our first trip to the Winter Games, and almost immediately it is clear that the presentation was kicked up quite a few notches. The opening movie is way better, the UI is cleaner and has a bit more personality, and the in-game graphics are a lot sharper. Credit where credit is due. Also, the first game presents itself in this weird aspect ratio that normally you won't see because I'm stretching the video out, but this is what they both look like when they're not stretched. 2007 was a weird time, I guess. Oh man, I got, I got mail from Omo Chow. I thought I blocked him. And wow, this game has balance board support. I guess one day I'll talk about the balance board, but not today. Today is not that day, but soon, s soon. Since these Olympics take place in completely different weather, the events that you partake in are brand new. There's downhill slalom, large hill jumping, racing on skis, and you can't forget about the figure skating. Just, ah, just, just look at how beautiful this performance is. Wait a minute, you can play as any of the characters in these, right? Oh, baby, yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. The most notable improvement here is the games are actually fun. Rather than having a ton of games that either required the waggle or other motion controls that just tended to be kind of finicky, many of the games here are based on tilting the controller or traditional button controls. And it actually feels pretty good. You do sort of have a good feeling of impacting the character's movement at all times. And while the games aren't really all too difficult, they are way more enjoyable than anything close to the best of the first game. There's even a pretty solid game of ice hockey in here too, for some good multiplayer fun. As for the single player, this time it is structured as a proper Olympics festival, where you will either practice or perform the different games themselves on a day-by-day -day basis, bookended with opening and closing ceremonies. And there's even the occasional boss fight in here too of all things. You got the likes of King Boo, Rouge the Bat, there's a giant bullet bill, it's not not the most creative that you that you threw in there. It's not it's, it's a, just a bullet bill that's just big. It's you're not even a bonsai, but okay, that's fine. And then we move on to the dream events, and now we're talking here. Rather than the mediocre fair of before, now there is fan service aplenty. You can race down Seaside Hill, ski jump through Good Egg Galaxy have a gliding dogfight in Sky Sanctuary before Sonic Generations brought this place back. Or you could play ice hockey in Bowser's Castle, but more specifically, from Mario Kart Super Circuit. <laughs> because why not? 
There are 11 dream events here coming from the first game's four. And man, for both of these franchises, these are really good ways to celebrate their treasured histories. And not only is the soundtrack pretty good once again, these dream events also began the trend of these games housing some fantastic remixes. Some of the tracks are ripped right out of the original games, but most of them are brand new and they sound great. The true highlight of all of this is Dream Figure Skating, featuring two full multi-part shows, one for each series, and it's just really neat. Like Sonic's features a fight with an icy chaos. I love that so much. There is another group of these unnecessary minigames that are purely just filler for whatever reason that are here, but I can look past that. This game overall is actually pretty good. It is still a minigame collection, so take that for what you will. All I'm saying here is one of the events is curling, and I never thought I would ever have a good time partaking in curling, but by damn, I did. We're only two games in and this series already took a pretty big 180 in terms of quality. It's time for game three. Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games. Wow. These titles are just gonna keep getting longer and more ridiculous with each entry, aren't they? Starting off, there is another fantastic opening video. I know it's pretty redundant at this point, me saying that, but man, these are just getting better with each one. Now the curious part about this game, God, I thought, I thought I blocked you. The curious part about this game is it is a return to the summer games, which we already covered, meaning some events are bound to return. And yep, yeah they do. However, for many of these, rather than just blindly waggling the controller once again, there is actually some timing involved. It's a relatively small change, but it ends up making for a big difference, as these are far more enjoyable events. The running events are still waggling though, but now you can just use the Wii Remote, you don't need a nunchuck, so... Huzzah! Probably the most impressive change is with Ping Pong. It is disastrous in 2008 with really, really wacky motion controls, but this time they managed to make it fun. And thankfully, there are plenty of new games as well. There's uneven bars, equestrian racing, badminton, beach volleyball, and sock, uh, I mean football, for more multiplayer good times. To be fair, we are in London this time, so we can't go around calling it soccer, so fair enough. And there's also synchronized swimming. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is, this is a bit too weird for me. You know what's not too weird for me, though? Ribbon twirling as Bowser. The jump in quality here really cannot be understated. Not only does it look way better, and the soundtrack continues to be shockingly really good, but the events are genuinely fun. I think it really all comes down to how much you care about motion controls, because like winter games before it, they're really not all that difficult. I just end up enjoying playing what's being thrown at me. And if you thought with a sequel that the dream event would be better than ever, man, you were right. And like before, the fan service is kind of the reason why. These are barely even recognizable from Olympic events at this point. They're seeing who can get the farthest in a land based on Yoshi's story, riding discuses in Windy Valley from Sonic Adventure, cooperatively riding horses to safely bring Yoshi eggs to the finish line in Moo Moo Meadows from Mario Kart Wii, competitive trampoline stunts and crazy gadget from Sonic Adventure 2, they really pulled out all the stops here. And the music that accompanies all of them, oh man, it's so good. Once again, these are easily the best part of the game. Well, second best part of the game. There's one short of the number of events of the last one, there's only 10 dream events here, but they are still all a good time. The biggest downside of the game though is, there's really no real reason to play the events. They're all unlocked from the start, which is great for multiplayer, but there's no single player mode incentivizing a reason to play every event. You get a little graphic for doing all of them, but that's really not enough for me. Instead, there is this new London party mode, and I, I played it, uh, but I still don't really have a good idea what the hell it is. It's like a group of four characters run around aimlessly in, 
I guess this is supposed to be London. I mean, Big Ben is there. You perform these odd little tasks and occasionally jump into proper events, and you do all of this to collect stickers to fill up a sticker book, and the first person to do so wins. Not to say that it is totally void of fun, it's about as much so as that weird mode from Smash Brothers, so your mileage will vary here, it's just not something I was expecting. So that concludes this series' time on the Wii. Now the first game is, once again, good. Good. But honestly, if you do want to give this series a shot, these are not bad games to check out. They're legitimately good minigame collections. I don't know why the case for 2012 is yellow. Uh... Yeah, I got nothing on that. That's just, that's just a weird thing. The last two games here made the high definition jump to the Wii U. Yeah, I had to, uh, had to dust off this bad boy. It's been, it's been a while. Starting off, now we have Mario and Sochi at the Sonic 24... Wait. Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games! Yeah, 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 that's it. But my god, these titles, they're getting ridiculous. Even though we made the jump to HD for this one, I almost feel like the game looks less interesting. It's more realistic, I guess, but the colors seem to be more washed out than before. You could argue that a ton of snow isn't interesting in the first place, but hey, it's a video game. The character models, on the other hand, look fantastic, like... Damn, they look good! M mostly The game makes one critical problem that kinda ruins the whole thing. It constantly, and for the most part without any real reason, tells you to swap between the Wii Remote Plus, not a regular Wii Remote, and the gamepad, just sort of randomly. For some events that are returning, you're required to use the gamepad, which makes no sense considering they worked just fine with a non-plus Wii Remote before. This concept is really built up for the dedicated biathlon event, which has you swap between Wii Remote to gamepad back to Wiimote. Like, why though? That's not fun. What we ultimately have here now, as a result, is a lot of returning events from a game that was good, but none of which are more or equally enjoyable than the last time they showed up. The bobsled event is a special one though, as it takes advantage of the gamepad's inward-facing camera. Boy, that certainly was an exciting discovery, let me tell you. Just look at how happy I was! They really tried to think of other ways to make it seem like the gamepad was a good idea here, but nah. Nah, it wasn't. Then we have the Legends Showdown mode, this game's single player. Conceptually? Cool! Like I said, I wanted a mode like this in London 2012, and now it's here! But then the characters end up battling against shadow forms of themselves? This, this isn't what happens at the Olympics. That I'm aware of, at least. Seriously, that was the best you could come up with? Yourself going against your inner shadow? I thought I was done talking about Kingdom Hearts. On the bright side, the dream events do return and they are still kinda neat, but there's not too much unexpected in terms of gameplay and themes, and there is less than there normally is. Even if these are relatively disappointing, they're still the best part of the game. It really shows that this whole Mario and Sonic thing shines the most with its fan service. At this point, the traditional Olympic theme seems kinda redundant. Curling is interesting though, it's like you're riding a really giant curling iron, and the theme of the area is Sonic 4 for some reason, so... That's not, that's not the good game, so we're gonna just go past that. And in a case of throwing anything at the wall and seeing what will stick, there's Snowball Scrimmage. Now there was a traditional snowball fight in the first Winter Game, and I think that is not an Olympic event. And if it is, I should probably practice, because I can, I can do a pretty good job of that. But here it's like, everybody is armed with a snowball gun, and you're trying to guide a ball around to a goal? What? I mean, if it was fun, I wouldn't complain, but it's just sort of... there, and you could play it. Cool. I'm really not too sure what happened here. This game just kind of exists. Any ambition that was there for the last two games is gone, while the most ambition that did go into the game, I'm assuming, was just to make it look pretty good. It's not even worthwhile to talk about the intro. It's done with in-game graphics as opposed to CG this time around, 
And it's just the two named heroes going downhill for a few seconds, and that's it. But in a crazy turn of events, it has one of the more interesting, at least in concept, extra modes with the action and answer mode, where you play through a few events and there are these special objectives in each. And that's kind of neat, but realistically, that's not enough to save the game. I will give them all the credit in the world though, they thought that people would be playing this game online. There's only four events, so I don't know why, I, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, and surprisingly enough, nobody's currently playing. Huh. If anybody actually got to play with people online when this game first came out, let me know how that went, cause uh, you could have told me that nobody ever played this game online and I would believe you. And without further ado, the final game. Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. We have a slightly shorter title this time around. Things are looking up. Right off the bat, the game starts better than the last one did. There's actually an intro this time. It is still done with in-game graphics, unfortunately, but stuff actually happens in this one. Oh hey, it's Styx from Sonic Boom. Everyone's favorite. This intro still doesn't come close to the best that the Wii had to offer, but it's still pretty good. And oddly enough, similar to the last game, there is certainly some ambition here, but it's done in the wrong places. Like you begin as your me on a beach being greeted by some of the characters. Then you can run around and briefly talk to a few more. Except for Luigi, because he just like dances in front of you for a bit and then stares at you. Hashtag year of Luigi. It's an interesting idea, but otherwise it's pretty empty. Oh. Oh, it's him. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to approach him very slowly. Big is sort of the doorman to this place that you can check out some collectibles and whatnot, nothing too special. Oh, and there's also Miiverse. No, man, too soon. Miiverse is dead. How else am I gonna know how good water looks in video games now, Nintendo? <laughs> the main focus is still, once again, the Olympic events themselves. And wow. This is, this is it. This is the least amount of events in the series yet. And no, my eyes aren't tricking me, they're not tricking you, there is no dream events here as well. That's like the main reason people care about this series, and it's not here. Okay. To be honest with you guys, I really don't have much to say about these events. They do use more traditional button controls rather than focusing on motion, which is awesome, but most of them are returning from previous games without any noticeable improvements. So they look a whole lot better than last time, but that's the most I can really say about them. And it doesn't matter how much effort goes into these games, there is something that is pure magic about seeing Bowser dance. The main new event joining the ranks now is boxing. Finally, you can pit two characters to a full-on fist fight. And okay, I like this mode a whole lot. Oh, this really shouldn't be as enjoyable as it is. Maybe I'm just a sick person, but I am finding extreme pleasure and absolutely obliterating these characters with these gloves. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh man, that is so good. All I'm saying here is Floyd Mayweather, you're pretty good, you got nothing on Yoshi. In addition to the standard, pretty short events, there are three full sports that you can play in single player or in multiplayer, and these are the highlight of this otherwise uninteresting package. There's beach volleyball, which is again a pretty good time, soccer, or football, don't hurt me, is enjoyable when played with the right people, and the new one... Hell, I didn't even really know what rugby was, but after playing it here, I can say I'm a fan. This game can actually get kind of intense. So out of all of the available events, these are really the only ones worth playing multiple times. As there are these other modes that you can play that will unlock more, but at that point it's repetitive because it's asking you to play the same shorter events over and over again with no variations. No thanks. I am really not sure what happened to these games' developments. They very clearly peaked with 2010 and 2012, but then they never seemed to care to match the heights with 2014 and 2016. Rio also had a small print run, 
so it is more expensive than it has any right to be as well. And at the end of the day, that is the most I can say about this series in general. It was a really weird idea, and 10 years later, it still is. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games is a series of 5 video games featuring a ton of Olympic events and fan service aplenty that started off as a novel concept, progressed into legitimately really good minigame collections, then sort of tapered off into mediocrity. And before you start flooding the comments, I know there are the portable games as well, but come on. This video is long enough as it is. These weren't, and really still aren't, the crossover games that everybody has been asking for. At the very least, though, it's a very interesting series of games that does in fact exist. Mario and Sonic were competing at the Olympics multiple times over. That's a very weird sentence. And hey, you could look at it like this. With no signs of the real-life Olympic Games ending anytime soon, we can expect a Mario and Sonic title every other year until the end of time.